Hi, everyone, and welcome to my EDS and nutrition webinar. Today, we're going to learn just a little bit about how to eat healthy um, for people who do have the diagnosis of Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Um, now, a little bit of a disclaimer here, we're not um, going to really get into the particulars of people of multiple disorders. So whether you have EDS and POTS and mast cell disease, we're not really gonna get into that. We're just gonna talk specifically about what you can do to maximize your nutrition for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So we're gonna learn more or less how to build a healthy, well-rounded meal upon your plate. Uh, just to introduce myself a little bit, my name is Bonnie Nasser. I am a registered dietitian. I myself have EDS and POTS. I also have four children and two of them have mast cell disease. So I've been dealing with this for a very long time um, with all of these different conditions and the conditions that are associated with it as well. So what we're gonna learn today are the components of a balanced diet, why these components matter specifically for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, how to build that plate like we were talking about, um, and then I'll give you a little bit of resources for further learning. This webinar today is for you. If you feel confused about how to eat, maybe your doctor's told you what kind of diet to do, but you're not really sure, um, you don't really know how foods impact you um, with your Ehlers-Danlos diagnosis, and if you struggle uh, with meal planning. The content that you're going to see here today is based on the food pyramid for subjects with chronic pain. So food and dietary issues um, that can be affected by utilizing the anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties of food. So let's first talk about the components of a balanced diet. So first we've got fruit. So fresh fruit and frozen fruit are both great options. Um, you know, canned in the syrupy um, liquid, that would be something that you would want to stay away from. Vegetables, right? Those are great. You can have them fresh, pre-cut, um, and frozen is even a good option too if you feel too tired to cut your own. Fiber rich carbohydrates. So these are going to be more of the whole grain carbohydrates. Um, you can cook them from dry, you can buy ready made, um, or even prepackaged um, if, again, you have issues with fatigue and it's too difficult to fully prepare it on your own. That's totally okay. Proteins. Proteins can be cooked from raw or frozen. Um, it's important if it's an animal source, though, to make sure that these are very fresh um, and have not been sitting around for a long time, especially if there's a mast cell disease component. Um, you know, dried or prepared um, or fresh vegetable uh, versions of protein are all acceptable. So for instance, dried beans um, or prepared, you know, tofu that kind of comes right out of the container. Those are all good choices as well. Healthy fats are plant-based oils, fatty fish, nuts and seeds. These are all great sources for you to choose from. We could talk a lot about which fats are healthier than others, but we're not gonna get into that right now. So why do all these components matter for EDS, right? That's kind of the big question here. So fruits and vegetables. Um, one of the biggest ones for EDS is vitamin C. We need that for collagen synthesis, and we know that we don't make collagen very well. We make it defectively, so it's important to get enough vitamin C so that even though you're going to make it defectively, at least you have enough to synthesize um, what you do need in terms of, uh, you know, the collagen. Um, phytochemicals. So phytochemicals reduce oxidative stress. Um, they're found in fruits and vegetables, they reduce inflammation, um, and they are actually important in your gut health as well. 
Um, the fiber in the fruits and the vegetables are also really important for the GI microbiome. Um, and this is used to make butyrate, which is a compound that will decrease intestinal um, inflammation and also inflammation throughout the body. Um, fruits and vegetables will decrease in general the pro-inflammatory markers such as the cytokines um, and the reactive oxygen species that contribute to inflammation. So we're trying to utilize the micronutrients, meaning the tiny little things in the fruits and the vegetables, some we know of, like we mentioned here, some we don't even know of. And that's why it's always important to eat the whole fruit or the whole vegetable. So for instance, if you juice, you're taking away the fiber from the vegetable, you're not having the fiber. And we don't really want that. We want to have the whole fruit or the whole vegetable. Fiber-rich carbohydrates are also very important. Um, so we get fiber from the fruits and vegetables, but also from the carbs. And the B vitamins are very important for energy production and also for your blood cells. So we get those from our whole grain carbohydrates. Um, having more fiber from carbohydrates will avoid your body's, you know, peak of insulin, the glycemic peak, um, which sugary or refined type of carbohydrates can do. And this helps eating the, the fiber rich carbohydrate is going to help to manage that um, those peaks that you get in the um, in the insulin, and this can help contribute to inflammation. So we want to keep that under control with the fiber added. Um, fiber is also again, good for the GI microbiome. Um, and it helps with uh, making the butyrate, which decreases inflammation. Um, and again, just like the fruits and vegetables, they contain compounds that have anti-inflammatory properties in them. Again, we're talking about more the whole grain type of carbohydrates. So that would be more of like a whole wheat flour um, as opposed to a white flour. Proteins. So proteins are made up of amino acids and our body will break them down back into the amino acids that they're made out of to make collagen and protein within the body. Um, Plant-based proteins, poultry and seafood are more favorable when it comes to inflammation than um, the beef um, type of protein. Um, so you do want, while you can still continue to eat beef, you do want to limit it somewhat. Um, proteins contain vitamins and minerals that are also necessary within the body. Healthy fats. So fats can contain polyphenols and they are made up of fatty acids that can help to decrease inflammation. Uh, fat is essential for your skin, for hormones, and for brain health. So it's really important to get those good fats in to the body. So how do we build an EDS-friendly plate of food? Well, we do that with fruits, vegetables, fiber-rich carbohydrates, proteins, and healthy fats. So how do we build an EDS plate? This is more or less what you want it to look like. So the protein is, you know, a little corner of your plate. It should be about, let's say, the size of a deck of playing cards, perhaps, um, you know, all stacked up together. That's about roughly four, four ounces of protein or so, four to six ounces sometimes. Um, your fruits and vegetables should really take up a bulk of your plate. Um, and, you know, you can mix and match those. And then we want to have the whole grains or the starchy vegetable um, taking up another um, small portion of the plate. Um, so that can be anything from whole grain brown rice, um, or it can be wheat berries. It can be a slice of whole grain bread, um, you know, anything of the sort, quinoa perhaps. And then the healthy fat is going to be a small amount um, because we don't really need a lot. It is calorie dense. Um, but we do need to include that as well. So that might be olive oil, avocado, nuts and seeds um, that contain fats. And then, of course, we want to drink water. Um, so this is what the plate would translate to if you actually had the food on your plate. 
Um, so you can see the proteins taking up, you know, a nice little corner. Um, the vegetables are really all throughout. Um, we've got the healthy fat here in the form of avocado. And then we've got some quinoa as our fiber rich carbohydrate. So this is what your plate more or less should look like at a meal. Here's another example. And here we have a whole grain toast. We've got um, vegetables and, um, and then we've got a fried egg for both our fat and our protein. Um, and this would be a nice, simple, easy to prepare, well-rounded meal. Here's another one where we've got yogurt. So in the yogurt, you're adding fat and protein. You do want that yogurt to ideally be unsweetened. Um, we've got some whole grain granola in there. Again, unsweetened would be the best choice. And then we've got berries. Um, so again, this might be a really good breakfast or a snack for you. So let's talk more about where can you learn more about how to eat for Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So what we discussed here about building a plate, this is kind of just the tip of the iceberg. Um, and again, it doesn't really go into anyone's specific, um, you know, food intolerances or other disease pathways that come into play uh, when a person does have other conditions related to Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. So we didn't really discover, you know, or, or, or talk about um, anti-inflammatory foods that can decrease chronic pain, um, which tools and strategies can help us to prepare healthy meals with less effort and time required, uh, which foods can help us to feel our best and which foods might make our symptoms worse because that's an important thing to know and figure out. And that's gonna be a little bit more of a personal journey for everybody as no two patients are gonna have the same intolerances. Um, but it is important to figure that out. Um, we, you know, it'd be good to talk about the trifecta of diseases, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, mast cell and POTS, and how this can affect our nutrition needs um, and how to create new habits and this is really the crucial part when changing our food choices for the better. How do we implement those new habits and make those become normal to us? Because change is hard. It is hard, especially when you have a chronic illness. Um, and how to overcome flares without derailing your entire progress. What happens when you wake up in the morning and you feel like garbage that day? How are you gonna get through the day nutritionally? So these are all really important things that we do need to learn in order to help keep us on task for feeling better. So if you liked what you heard today, um, you can certainly delve further into all the things that we did not discuss in my EDS Pain Relief Protocol course. Um, so this is a course that I've developed um, for patients who do not want to do one-on-one -on -one counseling, but want to have more of a self-paced um, way of helping yourself to make positive changes for your Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome diagnosis. So there'll be five in-depth modules. Um, and you'll have actionable tips and things that you can do to help yourself feel better and get better. Um, it is a self-paced format. And I have printable handouts to make things easier for you, recipes um, and ideas. And there's a lot of bonuses in there um, thrown in just to help you get a better um, feel for this condition and how to advocate for yourself and how to help yourself stay on track, stay focused and feel better without it feeling overwhelming because nobody needs to be overwhelmed when they have a chronic disease. So as a special thank you for listening, if you got this far, um, I do have a coupon for you. It's EDS webinar, all capital for 10% off of the course. And um, you can go to the link below in the email and you will be able to um, purchase this course. Thank you so much for listening.